Hello everybody, this is Jody Johnson with the 68th or 69th, I can't even remember, episode of Coffee with Jody. We are talking this month about profiles and the difference knowing your profile and the profile of your team members can make in your business. There's one trait that all successful people have in common, and that is self-awareness. Those of us who know what motivates us are more likely to pursue opportunities for the right reasons to get the right outcomes and results that they're after. Our motivators actually influence our behavior and the actions that we take. So we're going to be going into the workplace motivator profile. It is vital for superior performance to know what motivates you because that fuels your passion, reduces fatigue, and actually engages you as you get the best possible outcomes because you're motivated by it. I'm going to be referencing a lot of different notes during this conversation, so you may see me look down, but that's only because I want to make sure to give you everything it is that I'm committed to giving you in this video. Knowing what motivates and drives you gives you a clear path forward in order for you to maximize your performance. There are seven motivators in the Workplace Motivator Profile. Now most people talk about maybe money or recognition, but there are actually seven. So I'm going to share them with you with a brief description. The first one is aesthetics. Aesthetics is the drive for balance, harmony, and form. The next one is economic, which is the drive for a return on investment. Next, individualistic. This is the drive to stand out, to be unique, to be different. Then we have power. This is the drive to have control or influence autonomy. Then altruistic. Altruistic is the drive to help others, sometimes at the expense of ourselves. Regulatory is the drive to establish order, control, doing things the way they're supposed to be done. And lastly, theoretical, which is the drive for knowledge. The drive for knowledge, learning, and understanding. In this profile, you're going to be getting a graph that shows the percentage of these different motivators on your personal drive. On your motivators, uh, results, you're going to have a percentage, a percentage that is which of these different areas of motivation are influencing you the most or the least. It will give you the range of the people that have taken this and then it gives you the mean average. Then it gives you a score of how these influence yours from one to seven. Your ranking reveals how influential each of these is in your performance and what drives your behavior. While it's very important to know what is motivating you, it's also extremely important to know what's motivating others. When you're looking at something else, when you're looking at another person, it can be very difficult to see what's motivating them. You have to observe their behavior. You have to hear what it is that they're speaking about and that they value. When I first did this profile, I got uh, altruistic as my number one, economic as my number two, and then it kind of falls from there. And my business partner, Doug, has just the reverse in his top two. He has economic and then he has altruistic. And therein lies some of the differences in how we approach the business. I was always about, let's help people, and he was more about, hey, we got to make money. The good news for both of us is that helping others and the drive for economic uh, return on investment, while it's important to us, it's also obviously extremely important to our clients. So the two things that motivate us and drive us and that we're passionate about are absolutely aligned with the business that we're in. You'll look for yourself when you get yours as to, hey, you know, how can I use these motivations, these drives, these passions to help me be more effective and increase my performance? Now, while knowing yours is really important, 
You'll also want to know the motivators and values and passions and drives of the people on your team. So a couple of ways that you can do that because it's off, it's awfully difficult to be able to just like figure that out. There are some guiding questions that you can either ask yourself or ask that person that can reveal that. So I'm going to go through a few of them with you. In aesthetics, it's like, what's beautiful to you? How important is it that you can express yourself creatively? Are form and aesthetics more important or is functionality more important? How important is work-life balance to you? And do you find that more of you is head in the clouds or practical? In economics, is it important to win? What is a reasonable return on investment? Do you generally think that people have an agenda or want or need something from you? Would you consider starting your own business or becoming an entrepreneur? When you're faced with a situation, do you look and reflect on how it's going to affect you or how it will affect others? Under individualistic, how important is it for you to be independent and autonomous? If you could do anything you wanted today, what would it be? Do you think people generally see the world the same way that you do? How do you feel about teamwork and collaboration? And what does freedom mean to you? Under power, what is the role that you typically like to play on a team? How important is it for you to be in charge? How would you motivate others to take action? What kinds of things do you like to have control over? If you take initiative, do you prefer direction before action? Under altruistic, do you have a hard time saying no or being overwhelmed or spread out too thin? I know a lot of business owners are. What is considered a reasonable amount of assistance from you or help for others? Would you be more likely to give to anyone who needs it or only to those who deserve it? Do you tend to sacrifice your needs for the needs of others? And do you feel like you need to do things for others in order to be valued or loved? Under regulatory, we have, is there a right and wrong way? How important is it to be right? Are rules and regulations important to you? How important is structure and process? When you go to solve a problem, do you prefer tried and true approaches? Or are you more flexible and open to options? And then lastly, theoretical. How important is it to understand all of the perspectives and get the details of a project or a problem? Do you consider yourself to be an expert in a field? Would you rather spend some time studying or reading or just learn as you go? What do you love about learning? What do you love learning new things? And what do you think is most important? When you get your results, they're going to give you your universal assets. What are your driving intuitions? What is the critical advantage you have with that motivator? What are the growth opportunities for you and learning paths? So quickly, I'm going to talk about each one so that you can have a better sense of what they are. Aesthetic motivators have a strong desire and need to achieve equilibrium between the world around us and with themselves while creating sustainable work-life balance between the two. They're creative, imaginative, artsy, mystical, and expressive. And this style may redefine or resist real world approaches to current challenges. The economic motivator is looking for security from self-interest, economic gains, and achieving real world returns on personal ventures, personal resources, and focused energy. The preferred approach to this motivator is both personal and professional with a focus on ultimate outcomes. The individualistic motivator needs to be seen as autonomous, unique, independent, and to stand apart from the crowd. The altruistic motivator is an expression of the need or energy to benefit others, sometimes at the expense of themselves. The regulatory motivator, they need to establish order, routine, and structure. They promote a black and white kind of mindset with a traditional approach to problems and challenges through standards, rules, and protocols. The theoretical motivator is the desire to uncover, discover, and recover the truth. This need to gain knowledge for knowledge's sake is the result of an itchy brain. Rational thinking, reasoning, and problem solving are important to this dimension. So while DISC looks at behaviors, 
The workplace motivator looks at what drives us, what motivates our actions and our, our performance. Both of which are important, different, but important. If you'd like to find out more about the profiles I've been sharing with you, click on the link below to download a white paper that will give you an outline of the difference that these profiles make for you personally and for your team and your effectiveness across the board to not only increase your performance, but theirs as well. Now, if you got value from this, then I ask you to please like it, share it, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're playing the game of increasing our YouTube followers, and I'd really appreciate it if you would do that. Bye for now.